So we decided to go by road. Remember, it's a vacation and budget. Moreover, we wanted it to also be something like a road trip, something enjoyable to see the roads and, you know, just have fun on the road as well. So our journey started from Yaba, through Ipaja, Ijaniki Road, through Badagri, Semeboda, and finally into Kotonu. But don't follow what I just said though. Please put it on Google Maps if you're driving. <laughs> There were some good roads, some bad roads, and there were at least 40 checkpoints, and I'm not kidding. So if you can't handle that, or you're easily traumatized by gun-wielding uniformed men stopping, staring, and profiling you, my sister, go and enter the plane. This journey is not for you. <laughs> so you can imagine my relief as we approach the toll gates into Benin Republic. A journey that has taken approximately six and a half hours is gradually winding down. Although, according to Google Maps, it should have just been three hours. My first impressions, very neat country. I understand that the president has made sure you litter the floor, you pay very huge fines. Another thing is that they have very large traffic circles or what we call roundabouts and they have a penchant for monuments. We head straight to our lodge, that's the Imolis at St. Rita. Actually, they pronounce it as St. Rita. Let me quickly show you around. It's a studio apartment we got because we wanted to be able to cook a few meals just in case. Did I tell you that I took some food items? Plus my baby was with me so I needed to be able to make him a few stuff if you understand. The plugs were French, but the hotel staff were very helpful to provide us with adapters. Wi-Fi was good, electricity was stable. As a matter of fact, the hotel didn't even have a backup generator. So first things after settling in, you need to download Google Translate if you haven't already done so. Everything here is French, even the cartoon my son was watching. I was hoping he would be able to speak some French before we left, maybe as a bonus for visiting Kotonou. You will need to change your money to Sefas. We actually did that on our way at the border. You have to register a line. We quickly had to do this because you will need it for almost everything. To make calls, of course, but also to get a mobile wallet so you can transfer money, book a ride, buy stuff, etc. The popular service providers here are MTN and Move. Uh, boy, this was a long form to fill. Lastly, if you didn't drive, you'll probably have to download their Ride Alien service app called Guzem. It works like Uber or Bolt, and all you have to do is download the app from the Play Store or Apple Store and find your wallet. Now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let me show you places to visit while you're in the main Republic. The beach at Fidrose, long, beautiful coast, clear water, soft sand. You don't need to pay to get onto the beach. There are mats available just in case you did not come with something to sit.
Did you notice the plane sitting on the beach floor? Let's go check it out. I got me a whooping 5,000 Safers ticket to go see it. It was reported that the plane crashed here with some fatalities. The plane has become an attraction for visitors at the beach. The mall, of course. Well, you would have to visit the mall to pick up a few things or stuff that you forgot to bring along, definitely. Besides that, I had to check out the pharmacy. Well, if you know, you know. <laughs> if you're certain that you know why I had to visit the pharmacy before leaving, leave me a comment in the chat box. Let me know how well you know me. You have to see the Amazon statue. It's magnificent. It's almost like you the presidential palace and stands at approximately 30 meters high. Now that's tall. Have you seen the movie The Woman King? Well, this is another reason to go see that movie. The bronze statue celebrates historic female Beninese warriors who fought against French colonial rule more than a century ago and one of the inspiration behind the movie The Woman King. The beautiful graffiti. I think it's easily the longest in Africa at more than one kilometer and still being painted. Various international artists and artists from within Benin Republic are painting images depicting the country's culture and history. It's just a beauty to behold. We die. The roads were good, so why not? We decided to take the one hour trip to see the town of Wida. Wida is actually a place of very deep history. It was one of the most active slave trading ports in all of Africa. Historians estimate that over the course of two centuries, Wida alone exported more than one million Africans before closing its trade in the 1860s. This is the point of no return. Once you pass through this point as a slave, it's final goodbyes. This medium compound right here is where slaves were prepared before being moved. This is a monument dedicated to the first missionaries on the slave coast. Still in Widal, I noticed this small shanty where women who lived there mined salt manually from the seawater. Interesting stuff. Now, let's go see the Notre Dame de Misericorde, shall we? If I didn't pronounce that correctly, forgive me, I'm only English speaking. It actually translates to mean Our Lady of Mercy and it's the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Cotonou. This diocese was originally created in the 1883 and has had several name changes. Can you spot the distinct Burgundy and white tiled architecture? Lovely.
place, the Etio route, is a major crossroad in the city of Kotonu. If you come into Kotonu by road, you will certainly pass by this place to go into the city. It's not a simple traffic circle, but something more. You can ask for the story behind it. If I told you everything about Kotonu, what would you look forward to when you visit? Yep, you read right. It's the temple of pythons. Some people in Widal actually worship live pythons. And I understand that the pythons are free to wander around and sometimes onto the main roads and streets. And you dare not harm them. Else, you incur the wrath of the gods. And yes, I would have loved to show you some of the life pythons and go in to show you the interior of the temple. But you guessed right. <laughs> My big courage filled me. But wait, let me show you something else that is very interesting. Right opposite the temple, you would find... Wait for it. A church. Yes, exactly. A church. Interesting stuff. You can learn a part of the 20th century history of Benin Republic by visiting the Place de Mati or the Place of the Martyrs. The monument stands as a memorial to the victims of a failed coup attempt in 1977. Let's talk a bit about the people. To me, they're friendly, very helpful, they're very content. They won't try to cheat or rip you off just because you're a foreigner. In another vein, there seems to be a very deliberate plan and approach to tourism. I think in the next few years, if you haven't been to Benin Republic, you may have to spend or pay a lot more to visit. They speak predominantly French and the local dialect called Fo. Interestingly, you'll find a number of people who also speak Yoruba, but very few speak English. Oh, did I tell you that these people love bikes? Men, women, children, young and old, everybody rides a bike. I think there are actually more bikes than cars. Take a look at a parking lot. <laughs> then it suddenly made sense to me why you didn't have to get to a proper foiling station to buy petrol. You can simply buy the small quantities you need for your bike from a roadside vendor selling in bottles. It's little wonder also why the right alien service, Gusem, had not only cars but lots of bikes. And if tricycle is your thing, they also have you covered. Trust me, I tried all three of them. And I can tell you that the bikes are considerably the cheapest option. Nightlife isn't bad, although I didn't get to try so much of that. My husband and I visited a couple of restaurants to experience the food. One was the clay and the other was the spices. The clay particularly had a more African team than beans. On different occasions, we tried different meals, including rice, shawarma, chips and chicken. And all was good. Every meal came with this very spicy green sauce called pimo. I'll call it their signature sauce. It's similar to something I've had in Ghana. But guess what? I actually got a mala. And with okra soup. And believe me, it's as good as what you will get at all. This tastes like fermented maize. And it's called kom. This on the other hand is like eko or obi. Akam, cold Akam, yeah. and it's called Akasa. 
soup can be eaten with fresh pepper or the spicy pimo sauce and fried fish. How about some street food? You should try this street burger. It's bread with a variety of sauce and filling to choose from, including spaghetti. Yep, you heard right, spaghetti. <laughs> If you're looking to pick up some souvenir before you go, then the artisanal center is your point of call. It features different artistic, handmade, beautiful items that are unique to the people of Benin Republic. I was getting close to time to go and I wanted to pick up some things that will remind me of my visit to Benin Republic. And someone recommended the Atsana Center. Time to go, and we are back at the bus station in Kotonu. Can you guess which of the transport service providers I went with? Journeying back into Lagos wasn't as stressful as going. I guess we had somehow gotten used to the roads and the journey. Overall, it's a nice country. It's a place I think you can move to with little or no cultural shock. So if you want to japa and your UK visa has not yet clicked, well, okay, just kidding. Let me know if you need any other information or guidance in the comment section. You can also look out for my Ghana edition of the Vacation on a Budget series. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Ciao!